so the chapter today chapter number 19 and the title is demands and recoveries and this covers from section 73 to 84 and also the rules starting from section rule number 142 to 161 okay now what is the difference between demand and recovery and where the provisions become applicable the question of demand comes where a person is liable to pay but he has not self assessed right or assessed but not paid to the everywhere it is self assessment right so either he has not assessed that liability so the question of payment in any case does not arise another situation assessed but not paid in that case also there is demand that now this is you have already assessed pay, pay the amount right and where it is not assessed it is determined by the officer right or even if it is assessed by the person but not paid then comes a question of recovery right so where a person has already assessed but not paid provisions are different but where he has not assessed and the department is of the opinion that the person is liable to pay then naturally the rule of natural justice has to be followed he has to be given a notice and then opportunity of representation then thereafter the decision comes and then a time is given to him within which he has to pay that right if he fails to pay, naturally the next step will be recovery, right? So meaning at such, you can very easily understand what is the meaning of demand and what is the meaning of recovery, right? Long chapter. Now once you have completed the chapter, what is expected from you to know that is given in the learning outcomes. And this says, number one, understand the provisions relating to determination of tax not paid, short paid. Not paid, short paid, it means these are already assessed, but is still not paid to the government, right? Or it is erroneously refunded. Refund provisions we have already discussed in detail right so refund application should be made only by the person who is eligible to get the refund now there can be a mistake by the from the side of the department where some refund has been given for which person was not eligible or the refund amount is more than what he was eligible for that will be called as erroneous refund right the next is input tax credit wrongly availed or utilized input tax credit all the provisions are already known to us what are the goods or services for which you can avail the credit prime of the answer is simple capital goods input and input services but every article procured every service procured does not come within the category of capital goods or input or input services unless those are utilized either in the course or furtherance of the business so where the any procurement of the goods or services is not utilized or to be utilized for or in relation to business and still the credit has been claimed that is the credit wrongly availed right now only availing itself is not a such a serious offense but 
utilizing the wrongly availed credit for paying the tax to the government that is wrong because in that case we are paying tax to the government out of government money right so where the credit is eligible to the extent of say 10,000 rupees right but person himself has availed the credit of 15,000 right eligible is 10,000 now when he has availed 15,000 out of these two situations we can consider it is utilized to the extent of 8,000 rupees and it is utilized to the extent of 12,000 rupees what happens one is first situation is eligible for 10,000 but what is availed 15,000 right first mistake second step is how much has been utilized out of that up to 8,000 or 12,000 if it is up to 8,000 this is very well within the limit for which he is eligible right but if he has utilized 12,000 against the actual eligibility of 12,000 then to the extent of 2,000 it is excess utilization also so to this extent it is wrong utilization also both the things are covered here in wrongly availed or utilized both the things are covered right when it is not utilized it has to be taken back otherwise either today or tomorrow someday that will be utilized of course the process will be much more simpler as compared to recovery because in any case money is lying with with the government or the person has been given only a credit and credit can be denied right so that will be much more simpler if it has not been utilized but both the things are covered here in either wrongly availed or wrongly utilized whether for any reason other than fraud or willful misstatement or separation of fact or otherwise now what is said is that the situation of short payment and non-payment wrongly availing or utilizing credit or wrong uh, or it is erroneous refund these may arise either intentionally or unintentionally intentionally means there is a fraud or misrepresentation or separation of facts by the person so that his liability gets reduced another situation he is under the impression about either the value or the rate of tax or exemption or some other thing because of which his liability happens to be less right so there is no intention of evasion but still it is a case of either short payment or non-payment so in nutshell you can say whatever be the reason for short payment non-payment whatever be the reason for erroneous refund or wrongful credit ultimately provisions are applicable but when it is an honest mistake section 73 is there but when it is intentional section 74 is there and the time period within which action can be taken that differs that differs right and another thing after that the penalty when it is unintentional to a certain extent penalties are avoided no penalties to a certain extent we are not saying it is avoided altogether but when it is intentional penalty is harsh in case of intention penalty can go to the equal amount of tax 
to that extent. But when it is unintentional, first of all, the person is being given opportunity to pay on his own, only pay interest, no penalty. This option is further extended that even when the show cause notice has been given under section 73, still you pay within 30 days, no penalty. Right? Thereafter, penalty comes in that to only 10% of the total tax. Got it? But in case of intention, there is no question of voluntary payment. Minimum penalty is 15% of the amount of tax. Minimum. And on the higher side, it can go up to the amount of tax. Right? Second point says, explain the consequences in case where tax is collected but not paid to the government. While discussing provisional assessment, some of these points we discussed. Tax collected from the public it means any amount collected from the public represented as if it did a tax payable to the government. Some advertisements are there on radio. GST applied even on vegetables, fresh fruits, etc. And later on shopkeeper saying it is a mistake. It can be a genuine mistake. Agreed. Go to a mall, number of items are there and by mistake there is a, something wrong in the software and the tax is collected on all the things. Wrong collection is not the intention but where it is collected by mistake paid to the credit of government. Paid to the government because in what name it has been collected? As a tax. Then who should have it? The government. If the supplier is allowed to retain the amount collected in the name of tax, that will be a kind of unjust enrichment. He is allowed to retain that amount. So common consumer, common public doesn't know what is the rate of tax, where the tax is applicable, where the tax is not applicable. Right? So some invoice coming to a layman who doesn't understand the taxation and he pays the tax and the person who is collecting in the amount is not paying to the government. That itself becomes a profit. That's why I'm calling it that is also a kind of unjust enrichment. That is one situation. In provisional assessment we said that where the assessee or the supplier cannot determine the value of the rate of taxation applicable or maybe exemptions have attracted. He can make an application to the officer, officer determines the value of the rate and the amount of tax payable plus a bond. In that situation, the supplier on his safe, safer side can, can collect a higher amount of tax. So that tomorrow I will not find the recipient. Today I can collect the higher amount. And I am safe because I am going to deposit that money with the government. So whatever be the situation, any amount which is represented as tax and collected from the customer should be paid to the credit of the government. Once it is done, the responsibility of the person collecting the tax is over. But not paid to the government, then for that also we have provisions. First there will be a demand and, and after the demand then when the liability has been determined then there will be recovery. Right? Then describe the provisions of the tax wrongfully collected and paid to the government. This is what we already talked about. Explain the recovery proceedings. First is when the recovery proceeding should be initiated. 